TOS Television, your digital force for Africa News Network. I am Abigail Okwande and this is Africa Now. Ugandan officials debunked reports that China could, only t could take control of the country's only international airport because of a failure to honor a loan agreement of over $200 million intended to expand the facility. China's embassy in Uganda also dismissed the report. According to documents shared with local media, China rejected Uganda's request to renegotiate some clauses in the 2015 loan deal. This included a clause that required Uganda's Civil Aviation Authority to set up an escrow account to hold all of of its revenues. Under the clause, the revenues in this account cannot be spent by the Aviation Authority without approval from Beijing. A three-year-old and six other people died on Tanzania's Pemba Island after eating poisonous turtle meat, which is a common delicacy among those living in the country's islands and coastal areas. A further 38 people were admitted to hospital, but most were discharged. The three others who are still in hospital are said to be in a stable condition. According to the Turtle Foundation charity, turtle meat in rare cases can be toxic due to a type of food poisoning that is thought to be linked to poisonous algae, which the turtles eat. As part of a program to replenish rhinos' population, decimated by poaching by European settlers since the 1970s, 30 endangered white rhinos arrived in Rwanda on Monday from South Africa after a 40-hour journey in a Boeing 747. According to the World Wildlife Fund, the southern white rhino, one of two subspecies of white rhino, is now considered endangered with about 20,000 individuals remaining. In an attempt to save the species from extinction, scientists are harvesting eggs from the younger of the two animals, Fatu, and using sperm from two diseased males to create embryos in an unprecedented breeding program. This is their last chance at survival. A 2019 High Court ruling that decriminalized gay sex in Botswana was upheld on Monday by the Court of Appeal. Reading the unanimous decision by five judges, Court of Appeal Judge President Ian Kirby said the criminalization of consensual same-sex activities violated the constitutional rights of the LGBTQ plus community. Drawn up under British rule, Botswana's penal code outlaws carnal knowledge of any person against the order of nature. Those convicted face up to seven years in prison. The homosexual community says the decision will forever change the landscape of democracy, human rights and equality in Botswana. Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo's government on Monday denied agreeing to joint operations with Uganda's army to track down Islamist rebels accused of suicide bombings in Kampala, insisting the two countries were only sharing intelligence. Islamic State said their local affiliate, known as the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF, were behind the November 16 attack which killed seven people, including the three bombers and injured dozens more. President Felix Tshisekedi informed the United Nations peacekeeping mission on Friday that he had authorized military cooperation with Uganda against the ADF, but did not provide any further details. This is your Digital First Pan-African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. More stories coming your way after the break. So stay tuned. Welcome back in politics. Guinea's ruling military junta in a statement broadcast on state television says disposed President Alpha Conde has been transferred to his wife's home in the capital Conakry. It said it would continue to provide the former head of state with treatment worthy of his rank and this without any national or international pressure. The 83-year-old ousted president was being held in Komikadu since he was ousted in Oku on September 5. Now, Mohamed Al-Faki, one of Sudan's highest-profile politicians detained during an October 25 military coup, was freed on Monday, a month after he was arrested. Faki is the latest of several prominent politicians to be freed, following the November 12 agreement which placed Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok at the head of a yet-to-be-formed cabinet of technocrats for a transitional period. Now to COVID-19 updates. 
China's President Xi Jinping has promised to send Africa some 1 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses to help close the vaccination gap. The President made the pledge during the China-Africa summit in Senegal. The recent pledge comes amid the spread of the new Omicron coronavirus variant that was first detected in Southern Africa. Less than 7% of Africa's population is fully vaccinated. And Rwanda will start giving COVID-19 booster shots to the elderly and those who have underlying conditions starting Tuesday, the country's health ministry announced. The ministry says the implementation will be done in phases and will begin in the capital, Kigali. Out of a population of about 13 million people, more than 3 million Rwandans have been fully jabbed to date. And in sports. Former Egypt international Mido on Twitter says FIFA deciding to hold the Club World Cup while AFCON is going on is a sign of disrespect to African football. The World Governing Body tournament was due to take place in December, but is now set to be held from 3 to 12 February in the United Arab Emirates after original host Japan pulled out because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Egyptians Al Ali says it will write to the Egyptians FA, Nations Cup Organizers for Confederation of African Football and FIFA on Tuesday requesting that the three bodies collaborate to resolve the clash of dates between the two events. And that is it on Africa Now. For more updates, to visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. To stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Okwande. Thanks for watching.